I want to jump into the ESG uh, side of it. Now, you know, this, the lithium industry is quite, quite honestly, Chris, is new for me as well. So I, I'm going to kind of hand it over to you to sort of paint a picture of, of what we're looking at from the ESG side and your approach, E3's approach to it, and, and just kind of walk in from there. Yeah, I think the best thing to do maybe is to start at the, the the top level, right? Consumer of lithium products is mainly in the future, um, I would say 90% or more consumed by electric vehicles. And you, there's a lot of discussion right now about, you know, the, the footprint of the materials that go into cars, especially in Europe, where the taxes are based on total CO2 impact not just what comes out of the tailpipe so there's a there's an eye on this and and the full impact of of a vehicle and with the materials that go into an ev specifically into the battery which are where it differentiates from a gas powered car um that esg side becomes uh, a pretty important piece of it so um the footprint of what goes into each of the products mm -hmm. is incredibly important. So having a look at this from uh, the mining perspective and the materials that go into the uh, electric vehicle batteries, uh, E3 is aiming to stand out from its peers in the space. And when you look at lithium produced conventionally prior to the advent of the lithium ion battery, it was generally solar evaporation ponds, um, and one hard rock mine in Australia. And so the impact on the environment from the east side of things, um, you know, you have open pits or big ponds, you have big surface impacts, you have interactions with the freshwater aquifers. On um, the Atacama, where the Solars are in South America, is a very dry part of the world with very limited water resources. Um, and from E3's perspective, just inherently to the, the technology we developed, um, it's a direct extraction method. It doesn't require evaporation ponds. And we're obviously, we're not hard rock, so we're, we don't have uh, an open pit mine. We're taking the brine from very deep in these aquifers that's non-drinking water, um, very, very salty. We extract the lithium out in a closed loop system. So there's the surface impact that we have is very minimal. We're talking 3% relative to a solar or mine. Um, we have no interaction with the surface water in our process because it's all coming from very deep. It's all within enclosed system. So it comes out of the aquifer, goes through a pipe to the facility where we take the lithium out of the brine. And then we put that uh, brine back into the aquifer directly. And so from that perspective, the, and this is also what governs our, uh, our social license, right? Is that we, we are, above our project where we'll be operating, there are farmer's fields and they will continue to be farmer's fields uh, while we also operate. So we don't have that sort of, that impact on the local uh, industry, um, the local environment. Um, but the big thing that a lot of companies like us get measured on at the end of the day is our carbon footprint. Right. And relative to um, other projects that are out there, E3's aim is to get down to you know, a net zero carbon emissions. And to do that, we'll be using Alberta technology. And this is one of the things, again, that we stand out. So we can uh, sequester the CO2 that we generate. And how that happens is we build a natural gas fired power plant because 98%, 99% of our energy on this project is electricity. And in Alberta, we can generate that very inexpensively with natural gas, supporting the local economy with hydrocarbons. So we can purchase hydrocarbons. We can burn that into natural gas power plant, generate all the electricity we need. And then that carbon, it's about 3% of the exhaust of the gas fired power plant, we can put into our disposal stream, into our wa wastewater, and dispose of that into the aquifer. And this is all uh, under design right now. Uh, it is operational in Alberta with another company down the road from us putting CO2 into the same aquifer. So the process has been proven. Um, here in Alberta, so we're not cutting anything new here. We're just looking at implementing it for our our particular project. Right. Um, we also have wind in Alberta, a large amount of wind power, and we have a wind farm adjacent to our property as well. So we look at to supplement that um, the total power load with wind. So the two aiming to get us down to zero carbon. I think when you look at the marketability of this of this. 
product, number one is quality. Uh, and the DLE, you know, sort of engineered to provide high quality, high product quality. So, you know, that, that is number one. Um, but I think a very close second will be your ESG uh, impact, especially when you're looking to find the funds to build a project. Um, there's a lot of ESG consciousness right now in terms of where the funds are providing capital and having that independently verified, which is our plan of working on that right now, the ind independent verification of our uh, total impact um, so that we can be evaluated by these funds. The um, Now, your, your proprietary system for separating the lithium um, but there's also, like you said, there's also this, this technology in place that isn't for for lower emissions and that that's that is already in place that you're going to use that must be a help though as well right if i'm understanding you right because you have you already have examples of where it can successfully be done which which helps for governments supporting you and and socially as well it, it, am i kind of seeing that right yeah i mean the the technology that we've developed we are commercializing right now and it's you know, to describe it in its simplest form, it's it's like a water softener. In a water softener, you have calcium in your water that's causing it to be hard, and you float over some little beads and you swap out for sodium. So you get a bit of sodium in water instead of calcium, and that softens it. The technology that we developed is the same thing, but for lithium. Um, the difference is in a water softener, when it's full of calcium, you backwash off that calcium and you flush it down the drain becomes useless to you. Um, for us, that's the money. That, that lithium that we backwash off of this material is what is now a concentrated solution of high-grade lithium. And because the material we developed doesn't, uh, doesn't attract other elements, we get, a, we get a, a very high-grade product. And all the information on that's on our website. And so that's what I say it's engineered for purity. That's what it really means, is that it, it has a very high quantity of lithium with very low anything else in it um, and high concentrations. And because that all happens uh, in an enclosed system, in, in a, it's a chemical system rather than a physical. So evaporation is a physical, mining is a physical, this is chemical. So we extract the lithium chemically mm. as the first primary step, the primary extraction step. Right. And that, that enables everything that, that really, that's how we get the ESG. I mean, it's, the, the footprint of this is inherent to the, to the way we do. We're not really trying to use less, you know, surface impact. It just, it is, it is the way it is with the system. Right. So yeah, it definitely garners um, that interest and that support because when we, when we go to apply for permits and we're saying we're going to, we just want a small little well pad where we're going to drill a bunch of wells off of, and we want a small facility and that's our total surface footprint with a pipeline connecting the two that's buried underground um, that allows the surface of that to be used um, for, for its original use, which is generally farming. Um, you know, the, the permit application that, therefore is not that complicated from an environmental and regulatory standpoint. 